Good morning and happy almost Merry Christmas and welcome to the United Church of Christ of Annapolis Worship Service. I'm Kathy McFadden, moderator, and we'll be presenting the announcements for this coming week. Hey everyone, join coffee hour today and sing happy birthday to Ryan. Yay! <laughs> so make sure you come and sing happy birthday. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Ryan. Did I did I uh, spoil your birthday today? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> oh, you had to work on your birthday. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, thank you for being here today. <laughs> uh, this year is coming to a close, and a new year is just around the corner. I never like to hurry up time, but after this year and all that we've endured, I will be glad to have it behind us. There is a hope in sight for 2021. We all pray. <laughs> Please post your prayers anytime during the service, so they will be read by Pastor. To, they will be read by Pastor during the prayers of the people. Uh, Lee Dotson and Pastor Ellen, pa Ellen, Pastor Ellen, uh, Pastoral Care Associate, are organizing the COVID Care Phone Group in order to call people on a regular basis. Um, so, if you'd like to be called, please let them know. Um, you can text Lee four one zero three five three. 5923 or Ellen at 908-425-6362 to let her, them know if you'd like to be receiving the calls. And thank you both Lee and, Past, and Pastor Ellen for doing that every day. Uh, Join Bible study uh, will resume on January the 10th uh, at 9 a.m. Uh, or 9.05 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Uh, join us for the coffee hour at, after uh, the 1030 service so you can uh, sing happy birthday to Ryan. <laughs> and the passcode is coffee, C-O, capital C-O-F-F-E-E. -E. Uh, evolve uh, spiritual uh, grace uh, sacred gathering tonight at six o'clock. Reverend Terry uh, Fitzgerald will be, speak, will be uh, preaching tonight. Uh, pastor's office's hours are Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 1045. The office will be closed on the 23rd, the 24th, and the 25th this week. Living the question, the Advent will reconvene on January the 7th and the 14th. Lots of upcoming activities um, this, this coming week. Uh, save the date uh, tomorrow, uh, December the 21st, for the longest night memorial service for the homeless in Anne Arundel County. It will be a live uh, feed broadcasted uh, on uh, uh, the Anne Arundel County's Facebook page. Uh, we've all been able for the years to be together, and Pastor, you've been a huge part of that. Um, I will miss that. I know deeply not being there and uh, being a part of that, but we'll do it virtually. Uh, Christmas Eve service will be at 7, 8, 7 p.m. via Zoom, so make sure you tune in for that. More, uh, will be, more will be coming up on that through the uh, weekly update, so please look for that. Also, Pastor would like to, to send in your Christmas stories so that he can share those through the Christmas Eve. Please do. Uh, it's a story of a Christmas in the past, a story of a planning and a celebration of the Christmas this year, and a story um, of your hope for a Christmas in the future. Make it about a minute, minute and a half. Uh, text Pastor that you would like to uh, partake, in, partake in that, and he'll send you the link to video it. So, Please, um, please join it. That will be awesome to see that through weave through our service um, on Christmas Eve. Uh, Mission Committee have been very busy putting together snack baskets for delivering to the local hospitals. They have been receiving them with great enthusiasm and many thanks. In addition, they are continuing to support our local police station as well on a monthly uh, basis, dropping off goodies to them. If you'd like to be involved with that, uh, this is a great committee, and Joan Brannigan has done so much for that. And with her committee, please consider once a month doing something. And Joan, I know, would greatly appreciate it, as do our local community people. Um, Friday, December 25th, Christmas, this is, this is really great, Christmas eggnog and sweater open house with Pastor Ellen and Pastor Ryan from 2 to 3. Uh, bonus points for the best Christmas sweater. Does that mean if it's ugly, whatever, just anything we want to wear that's whatever, we get points? Who's, who's going to be deciding the points, Pastor? <laughs> so, anyway. The Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Holy Spirit, good, okay. December 27th, the service will be live streamed from the Central Atlantic Conference. The UCC, uh, UCCA leadership team will have a well-deserved week off. Thank you. And please have a safe and happy Christmas. I look forward to a new year where we can all be together.
the grace and peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Today, we mark the fourth Sunday of Advent. The shadows have long have grown much longer, and tomorrow marks the longest night of the year. Yet, as we continue to await the arrival of the Christ child, our light grows brighter. Hope, peace, joy, and love on earth do not seem more distant. They seem closer. My name is Irish Sermons, and I and it is my great joy to worship with you, church, on this day. I'm especially grateful to, uh, to worship with you all today because it is Ryan's birthday, and, um, you know, church is a family affair here, and I'm so glad that we can be together, even if it's virtually, um, to worship and to be at church together. The service order has been posted in the YouTube chat and emailed out, so please feel free to download it. Um, but of course, it's not required um, to participate in the service. As today is also the fourth Sunday of Advent, if you have a candle, we invite you to use it today to light in a service of hope. If you have four candles, even better. Any candle will do. But before we begin, let us pause for a moment and take a deep breath. And another. Friends, God calls us to gather. Let us give this call a voice. This is our call to worship. Tell out my soul. Tell out the greatness of God. God who comes to us not in fire and brimstone, not with trumpets or swords or tanks or A-bombs, not with sound metrics and slick presentations to convince us, but as a peasant child born of an ordinary, extraordinary woman, Mary, who sings out to God in praise, a song of liberation. Mary, did you know that your holy cry would be a subversive word? That the tyrants would tremble when they know your truth is heard? Open our hearts so we may have the faith of Mary. Tell out my soul the greatness of our God. Open my ears that I may listen and my lips so my mouth may proclaim your praise. Peace be with you and also with you. Now, Please share a sign of peace by commenting on the live stream page or send a text to someone or shout peace to the world. Peace. <laughs> peace. Peace be with you. Take 
the first step when all I'm holding is my breath. I pray that you are there. When I can't seem to forget, when I can't see the morning light yet, I pray that you are there. I pray love is greater than fear. Love is greater than, greater than, greater than fear. Love is greater than, greater than, greater than fear. Love is greater than, greater than, greater than fear. Love is greater than. Love truly is greater than fear. Let us pray. God, being someone who follows you is not always an easy thing. We think of Mary, Jesus' mama, and we see a fierce soul whose words have inspired liberation and hope in the quarters of poverty since they were shared out with your people. We worry that we cannot live even love like that. Remind us that Mary first quaked at the news that she would be Jesus's mama. She was beyond perplexed, like any of us might be. Yet she heard your word and said, let it be. Impart in us as we worship today a spirit of let it be be. A spirit that reminds us that we are called people, called to share the love of God to rich and poor alike. Bless our worship this day from wherever and whenever we are, that we may be gathered nonetheless as your people, praising, listening, and walking with you. Amen. Amen. People of God, as the light and the day grow shorter, we continue the tradition of lighting our candles in Advent. And this year, on purpose, I've used candles that don't match the Advent set because I want to reflect what we have at home, whatever hodgepodge that might be, reminding us that 
whatever light we are able to hold in, even if it's not the color that we expected it to be, it shines out in the darkness. And so we light candles this, e this morning. Candle first of hope. Candle of peace. A candle of joy. And a candle of love. But no matter how bright the lights, we also come into places carrying burdens. God invites us to let go of those burdens, to trust in forgiveness. And so trusting in God's forgiveness, let us take a moment in silence to confess our failings and acknowledge our part in the pain of the world. Before God, and with you, the people of God, I confess to turning away from God in the ways I wound my life, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Before God, with the people of God, we confess to turning away from God in the ways we wound our lives, the lives of others, and the life of this world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. good to see everybody or try to see everybody today. I'm sorry, I can't see everybody. But um, I'm going to start first by uh, asking uh, David and Lisa, who, uh, who we can't see, if you can give me a co-host permissions. I actually want to share a picture with you. And um, as they're doing that, I want to ask everybody a question. And that is, um, have you ever, have you ever thought that something was just too hard to do? Like you just couldn't make it happen? And um, the picture I'm going to share here is um, one my mom sent me today. Um, and of course, you know, it's, it is, apparently it's my birthday, so I'm being told. And um, this must have been, would have been taken right around my birthday when I was a young kid. And so um, that's not Floyd, that is actually me. Um, probably around the same age, given where that is. And so, so have you ever been asked to do something impossible? God asks us to do impossible things all the time. Sometimes that might think might be imagining sharing stories with friends. Sometimes it might feel impossible to actually love um, your sisters or brothers or your parents. You might think that you're really angry at them. Um, sometimes it might feel impossible to finish a schoolwork assignment. Sometimes it might feel impossible to do something good in the world. Sometimes it might feel impossible to make it to church. There's a lot of things that we think are really impossible to do. But what it means to love your sisters or your brothers or to, to, to love anything is really to be able to love something that feels impossible. 
and to see it become possible. That's the story of Jesus. Jesus was impossible. This idea of God being a human being, being one of us, walking around with us, that seemed impossible. But it was possible. And there are so many things that we think aren't possible, like, sure, doing our homework. Or maybe it's worrying about keeping things clean or keeping the world clean or taking care of neighbors. Maybe you've noticed somebody who looks like they don't have a home to go to at night. That person could even be in one of your classrooms. Maybe it's realizing that not everybody has enough food. And it might seem impossible to try to make sure that everybody has food and that everybody has a home to go to. But if we understand what love really means, it's believing that those things are possible, that we actually can do that, that we can try to live that kind of a life. And so sisters and brothers, friends, that's what I invite you to think about. What do you think is impossible that you really want to make possible, that cares for one another? And that is what it means to love. Let us pray. Loving God, even though young, we know that we will be asked to do impossible things. Help us to know that your love is about making possible things possible. Help us to have the confidence the faith to be able to do that together. And let us pray the prayer which Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Listen now in the reading of scripture for the word and wisdom of God. We open our hearts to the word and wisdom of God. Our first reading comes from 2 Samuel chapter 7 verses 1 to 11 and 16. The reading is going to be from the Common English Bible. When the king was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to the prophet Nathan, look, I am living in a cedar palace, but God's chest is housed in a tent. Nathan said to the king, go ahead and do whatever you are thinking because the Lord is with you. But that very night, the Lord's word came to Nathan. Go to my servant David, my servant David, and tell him, this is what the Lord says. You are not the one to build the temple for me to live in. In fact, I haven't lived in a temple from the day I brought Israel out of Egypt until now. Instead, I have been traveling around in a tent and in a dwelling. Throughout my traveling around with the Israelites, did I ever ask any of Israel's tribal leaders I appointed to shepherd my people, why haven't you built me a cedar temple? So then, say this to my servant David. This is what the Lord of heavenly forces says. I took you from the pasture, from following the flock, to be leader over my people Israel. I've been with you 
everywhere you've gone, and I've eliminated all your em enemies before you. Now I will make your name great, like the name of the greatest people on earth. I'm going to provide a place for my people Israel and plant them so that they may live there and no longer be disturbed. Cruel people will no longer trouble them as they had been earlier when I appointed leaders over my people Israel and I will give you rest from all your enemies. And the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make a destiny for you. Your destiny and your kingdom will be secured forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. Here ends the first reading. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading today comes from the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38, in the Common English Bible. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one! The Lord is with you! She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, um, how will this happen since I haven't had sexual relations with a man? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come over you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's son. Look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. This woman who was labeled unable to conceive is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible for God. Then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me, just as you have said. Then the angel left her. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God.
please pray with me. O God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be beautiful in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. What do I love when I love my God? The theologian John Caputo asks this question at the beginning of his book on religion. The very beginning of any religion, he asserts, is love. But what exactly does that mean? The love of God sounds almost sanctimonious. Even when it slips out of our mouths, it feels inadequate in the harsh reality of day. The love of God is too much and at the same time too unreal, ethereal, for us to really grasp it or even live in it. And the ancient church wondered at how to live it out too. They knew the love of God wasn't a bunch of rules. It wasn't obsessed with regulating behavior. It was something, something else, you know? Something, something that captivated you, that made you not worry about following a rule book, that made you want, want to love God, you know? So let's, let's rephrase it. Let's follow Augustine, that ancient church bishop who wrestled with this in his wonderful tome, Confessions, where he asks two similar questions. What do I love when I love God? And what do I love when I love you, my God? Or, as that theologian I mentioned, John Caputo, asked in merging Augustine's questions together, What do I love when I love my God? Yes! What do I love when I love my God? Do I love beautiful mornings? My neighbor? Long walks on the beach or in the foothills? That certain gloaming in the sky on an evening when everything takes on a golden glow? The uncontrollable laughter of a baby? The smell of a baby's head? Puppies and kittens? A warm meal by a fire, muddy boots drying out by the door. Maybe all of those things. But that's not near enough. Not even close. This is God we're talking about, not a Hallmark movie. So what does it mean to love God? Well now, anyone worth their salt loves God. I'm going to quote John Caputo a lot today. To not love God is to be too caught up in self-love or gratification, to only care about your portfolio or how your house looks or your career progression when compared to a sibling or a college roommate or something like that. It's to be wrapped up in all the things that don't matter, to, to love money and profit and plastic and electrons and video games more than God. It means living a life that would have made Ebenezer Scrooge proud before that fateful Christmas Eve. Because to love God, well, to love God is consuming. It reaches every fiber of your being, the lungs, the muscles, those sinews between your elbow and whatever repaired those bones in your broken foot. It catches a light and spills out of you. Religion is for lovers, Caputo says, for men and women of passion, for real people with a passion for something other than taking profits, people who believe in something, who hope like mad in something, who love something with a love that surpasses understanding. Faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these three, said St. Paul, is love. Love, 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 the Beatles sang, and we all we need is love, and we still believe it. One of us in this church has even cornered the Maryland market on the license plate, love wins. But what do we love when we love our God? We still haven't answered that. And that is the question, the question of life, the universe, and everything. And the answer clearly is at 42. The answer lies somewhere here, in us. And what we're doing via Zoom and YouTube five days before Christmas, being religious. We're religious because we love the opposite of a religious person is a loveless person. Whoever does not love does not know God, John wrote in the first letter, chapter 4, verse 8. Love is our criterion, our measure of everything we do. It is our measure of society, of societal structures, 
of social networks, of friendships, of our church budget, our music, of how we purchase Christmas gifts, how we care for each other, how we call up one another, who we're willing to wash dishes for and change diapers for in old age. Love of God is that measure, that motivator, that guide. Our church, our religion must be tested and tried by whether it loves God and what it loves when it proclaims that it loves God. Because God is so big, our test is not whether we can say we love God. Rather, we'll be known by our fruits. The what do we love when we love God? The same goes if we want to say, I love Jesus. What do we love when we love Jesus? But if love is the measure, then, to quote the ancient Bishop Augustine again, the only measure of love is love without measure. What gain do we get when we love in moderation? Up to a point. What kind of dry and desiccated life is that? Love is not a bargain, but unconditional giving. It is not an investment, but a commitment, come what may. That's Caputo again. Lovers go beyond and they look for ways to go beyond their duty. Who in loving their children only goes up to a point? Even those hard and difficult things that we might do when correction is needed is called hard love. It is born out of an ultimate consuming love. Now, what do we love when we love God? Here we turn to Mary. Here in the story of the Annunciation, Mary receives that news from the Archangel Gabriel that she is to conceive and give birth to a child. In case you missed the reading, let's try it again. Angel, rejoice, favored one! The Lord is with you! Mary, confused, confounded. Um, hi? Angel, don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son and... You will name him Jesus. He will be great and he will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever and there will be no end to his kingdom. Mary, looking around to see if her friends are paying some kind of a joke on her and getting a little upset now. Um, you know, that's not actually physically possible, right? And then the angel explains very simply. Nothing is impossible with God. Mary, with fear and trembling, but with courage. Yes, let it be. And then she focuses on the good news of God with us, coming to earth, not on the impossibility of all of this, the impossible God living with us is becoming possible. She bursts into a song of liberation for the poor, a song that makes the mighty tremble in their thrones. For her, the hope of all the peoples was coming, the poverty, the pain, the daily hunger of the poor, the anguish of wars, God with us, Emmanuel was coming, those things that could be broken, those cycles ended, traumas remembered but heal. Her soul cried out the greatness of God. She was filled to overflowing with love. What do we love when we love our God? We love the impossible that becomes possible. God with us, Emmanuel, the Word made flesh, Jesus, that was impossible. Yet it became possible, real. She knew it. And her skepticism crumbled away as her soul burst forth in song, Yes, let it be! She cried out. We love when we say yes to God. A God who is the impossible becoming possible. We love that. And what is possible that seems impossible? Look at your own life. Does it make any sense that you could love another human being ever so much that it makes your chest and that beating heart hurt? Does it seem possible, rational, to allow yourself to love another person so much that if something happened to them, it would hurt so much that breath seemed impossible? 
It is contrary to economics and realism and rationalism to love one some so deeply it injures. But to love is to love the impossible. And here's where that becomes a twisted, curvy, wonderful knot. It becomes impossible not to love them. We who are Christians love God. When we love the impossible, become real. The Word made flesh, Jesus amongst us, Emmanuel. Love is greater than fear. Fear is rooted in certainty. It is grounded in things we can grasp based on data, the facts, the things we know, and the things we have convinced ourselves cannot happen. Love is rooted in the impossible becoming possible, in the breaking of all those curmudgeonly certainties. And is a religion, a church, a human being worth its salt if it does not love the impossible and doesn't throw itself into the work of the impossible becoming possible? That, sisters and brothers, is what it means to love God. I spent most of yesterday putting together, way too last minute, a memorial service for our homeless sisters and brothers in Anne Arundel County. Every year on the longest night of the year, usually December 21st, just before sunset, we gather to remember the people who died while experiencing homelessness in the previous year. I have led this service for six years now. And each year, I despair, if even for a moment, because I hear that curmudgeon within myself whisper, it is impossible to ever end homelessness. There are not enough resources. There is not enough willpower. This year, I wasn't even sure until a few days ago that we would even have the service, but it will be live streamed by the county and on the public access channel of the county at 4.30 p.m. tomorrow. To give into that despair is what it means to be a loveless human being. It's to drown myself in certainties that may pass every rational, reasonable test. But who wants to go to that church? Who wants to praise that God? Who tells out their soul the greatness of the Lord to the God of spreadsheets and algorithms that remain only in the realm of possibility? I'm not sure mathematicians adhere to such a narrow calculus, for they search within logic to reveal as possible what was once thought impossible. Yet when I read our reading from the Hebrew Bible, I was reminded that God is obsessed with housing. In this reading, the point of reading it here in the Christian year is focused in on that last line, that God is establishing a royal line coming from David. We're clearly supposed to see this as pointing to Jesus as belonging to the house of David, established with this pronouncement to the prophet Nathan. But before that, there's a whole long section of God's housing. David ponders building God a temple of cedar, keeping in mind that the cedars of Lebanon were a coveted wood that denoted luxury in that time. And Nathan agrees with David. But then Nathan has a dream where God contradicts the prophet by ridiculing the idea of God having a house. In effect, God is saying that until a city is established where all God's people have a home, a reference to Jerusalem becoming a royal city where all God's people could be welcome, and God will remain in a tent, traveling with God's people wherever they wander, homeless. And God wants it that way. It seems impossible. Why would we house God last? Aren't we supposed to put up the temple first and then build around it? But it's a reminder to us today, too, that God does not dwell with us until all God's people have a home. To Nathan's imagination, a city where all God's people would be planted, that is, have a home, was impossible. It hadn't happened. What with sputters and starts and divisions of tribes, but a unified city, a place of radical welcome where God's love could be built into the very structure, the foundations of the place. Impossible, but possible with God. What do I love when I love my God? the impossible hope of all God's children having a home, of a society where a definition of community success lay in everyone having a home, and of not giving in to despair at the sheer complexity and challenge of it all. This list of impossible things could go on forever. Being able to love who you love, world peace, no one hungry, the church growing and being relevant. But what impossible thing, when it becomes possible, makes you tell out your soul? That 
is what it means to love God. That is the consuming, heart-wrenching, wonderful, and terrifying love of God that no life worth its salt, no organization worth its vision statement can be without. What is that for you? Know that, and you'll probably spend your life engaged to it. But that is what it means to love your God. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. People of God, we are called to give and take joy in that giving. For what we give builds of the kingdom of God, equipping ourselves and one another to be disciples who are there for one another and our community, sharing God's love every step of the way. Please pray and consider what you may give. And if you are in need of assistance due to the coronavirus especially, please don't hesitate to contact a member of our church staff to get relief from the Deacon's uh, Assistance Fund. Thank you for all your gifts and your giving. Amen. Gracious God, we are grateful for all of the gifts that are given in the service of this church. 
Help us to not be those naysayers, those curmudgeons who despair. Help us to believe in love, to believe in the impossible being made possible, to see those valleys made high and those mountains made low, to go through them with faith and confidence that you are with us every step of the way. Bless these gifts and those who give them in time, in energy, in prayer, and in money, so that we may continue to be and build up the people of God in your midst. Amen. Friends, we come now to a time of prayer and we invite you to put any prayers that you wish to lift up there in the chat on YouTube. I've got it sitting on a little stand next to me where I can see the phone feed. These can be prayers of hope, but also they can be prayers of despair. They can be prayers of longing. They can be prayers of joy. The whole human community is reflected in the prayers that we bring to God. And so we invite you to bring them together in this place, and I will read them out as they are posted. And then we'll conclude. With God in your grace, hear our prayer, or God in your mercy, hear our prayer, or as is so often the case, God in your grace and mercy, hear our prayer. So a prayer for the first doses, this is from Sandy, for the first doses of the COVID vaccine and for all the healthcare workers, and their staff keeping the hospitals, nursing homes, and assisted living places running. We pray for God's mercy and grace to be with them. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. We offer up prayers for our country for the next 30 days as we go through an inauguration, and I don't care what your politics are, we pray for all of us as we negotiate this time together to be this con the country that we have been called to be. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. A prayer from Rick for the smell of a pine tree. God, in your grace, hear our prayers. A prayer lifted up by Greg for Rebecca an apparently homeless and mentally troubled woman who sometimes appears in his neighborhood. I pray for ways to help her more effectively than what I did yesterday. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayers. Prayer from Laura for those living alone in the pandemic and those spending the holidays alone. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayers. Praise for the United Church of Christ, okay, and its leadership, for challenging us to be the hands and feet of God. It is as the Spirit moves that we are called into this work to be the hands and feet. May we open our ears, open our mouths, and open our hearts that it be so. God, in your grace and mercy, Hear our prayers. Praise for broken families and relationships that 2021, if not sooner, will mend themselves. No one should feel alone and to love wastefully. God, in your grace, hear our prayers. I've got some here in the chat box of the uh, Zoom, which not everybody can see, and I'll share those too. Prayers that people will listen to the warnings and save lives by not gathering in groups during Christmas and New Year's. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our sister Jean. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I pray for my stepmother, whose stepfather died of COVID this past week. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all those who are not going to be able to see their families because of this pandemic. 
God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hildy offers up a prayer for Marcy, who had a good day yesterday. And we pray for more of those good days as she continues to seek healing and recovery. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our friends, Carl and Elizabeth, sisters and brothers to this congregation. God, in your grace, hear our prayers. We pray for our sister Peggy as we come to the anniversary of Mark's death on the 22nd. God, in our mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our brother Max, a midshipman who died, our midshipman died who was very close to him. We pray for all those grieving the loss of that young man, of the future that he represented, and the hopes. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sisters and brothers, it is always in these times where we remember gathering that we feel loss more heavily. Bless each and every one of you as you go through those remembrances in this time. Reach out if you need to. Reach out if you don't think you need to. But remember that we are sisters and brothers called by Christ together. And the fact that we have loved, the fact that we have been able to love, is itself a gift. And those wounds and that pain means that we have loved and lived. And we know what it's like for impossible things to become possible. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And for all those prayers that have not been shared, that remain in our hearts, God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayers. We bring these together in a prayer for peace. O loving God, spirit of hope and peace, lead us from death to life. Lead us from falsehood to truth. Lead us from despair to hope, from fear to trust. Lead us from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts, our world, our universe. Peace, peace, peace. Longing 
for water, many still thirst. Make us your bread, broken for others, shared until all are fed. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church. Shelter, many are homeless, longing for war, many are cold. Make us your building, sheltering others, walls made of living stone. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light. In your church gathered today. God, make us your shelter, walls made of living stone. Make us people who do not despair, but are filled with the love that comes from impossible faith, the possible or the impossible becoming possible. God, let us be your people as we journey towards that Christmas star, Christ coming in our midst, God with us, Emmanuel, and let us see you, the image of God, and each sister and brother we see. Christ be our light. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.